On today's video, we go Ubering in the hood in Bradenton, Florida. Let me tell you, never again. When it comes to sketchy and uncomfortable situations, this was the evening. Our second customer for the day is a lady that we picked up here at a nightclub, a Latino nightclub in Sarasota, and we drove her to a mobile home park in Bradenton, Florida. We get to talking, everything was chill. She's from the same hometown some of my family members are from. Now, as you guys know, because of the Uber privacy policy, I cannot show you these people who they are and where I'm dropping them off, unless I'm picking them up from a public place and I can show that. So we have to have a little bit of discrepancy. I know you guys have already told me it ruins the entertainment value, but we have to follow the rules. A problem that many people on this evening had trouble doing. So the first ride of the day was somebody in Sarasota around the Fruitville area. Now this was an $8 ride, they gave me a $5 tip, as well as the person we picked up at the nightclub and dropped off at the trailer park in Bradenton, Florida. This was a $13 ride with a $3 tip. So the next one was a ride in the Lockwood Ridge area of Bradenton. The rider canceled the ride halfway through me driving there. That was kind of weird. I've never had that happen, but they canceled the ride and I was already heading in their direction, which leaves me driving around aimlessly in some of the worst neighborhoods Bradenton has to offer. And this was where crap gets wrong. I get a notification for a ride that's not that far from point A to point B in West Bradenton, so I have to drive through Bradenton, some of the worst areas. Now, keep in mind, this is well past midnight. We're talking between 1 to 4 a.m. is everything you're seeing on today's video. So late at night, Saturday night, we're going to go pick somebody up in West Bradenton. Bradenton has a huge overdose problem, lots of addictions, lots of gangs. It really is a city that has a lot of problems. The beaches are beautiful, the suburbs are great, but the actual city core of Bradenton really sucks. Now, I've already done videos in Sarasota and Fort Myers, but I can tell you Bradenton at night is on a whole different level. This really is a scary place to Uber at night in bad neighborhoods. It just has a bad feel it has a bad vibe so here we are we're driving on 15th north right now driving through uh samoset somewhere north of onico we're gonna get on i believe this is 30th or 27th heading towards west bradenton and here is probably somebody overdosing typical brains and stuff could just be a medical emergency i'm not sure my guess would be an overdose after all that is what bradenton is known for so here's an ambulance at two in the morning outside of residences and we're just gonna drive past them really carefully here and slow, make sure there's nobody outside. We're good to go. This is the type of neighborhood where you got corner stores on every other block. Now I hang out in Bradenton in the daytime all the time, but at night it really turns into a completely different beast. And I was surprised to see how bad West Bradenton is at night. West Bradenton in the daytime looks kind of nice and pretty, but there's so many vagrant people homeless people out at night in Bradenton. It's like a huge percentage of the population here is nothing but nocturnal dumpster diving junkies. And that makes for a really crappy city, to be honest. This intersection we're approaching up ahead is so scary that you're gonna see the car in front of us actually blew the red light. This is a really scary intersection. There's always people panhandling here aggressively. And that car right in front of us, they decided that they really didn't even want to stop at the red light. I don't blame them. I've been on this intersection and done the same thing late at night because it just feels really sketchy. People scared to stop at red lights is something you only see in the absolute worst neighborhoods in America. So this is the area our customer is waiting in. It's notorious for homelessness, people out late at night. Talk about people who can't follow the rules. The name on this person was a female name, so I expected a female. When I show up, it's actually a male. Now, I've learned that when you find yourself in a situation that's uncomfortable, you need to speak up. So I told the guy, hey, bro, what's good? Why you got a female name? You're not a female. You're a guy. Why are you, you know, you're trying to do something crazy? You better not do something crazy. So he hops in the ride. I'm like, are you sure you want to do this, bro? Because already you're making me feel uncomfortable. So... One thing that I do when I find an uncomfortable situation is I don't play it off. I don't ignore it. I face it. I confront it. I say, hey, bro, what are you really trying to do, bro? Like, this is super sketchy. You, you're not a female. Are you sure you want to get in the ride? Are you sure you know what you're doing? Because I don't like the way this is going. So, again, people who just can't follow the rules. Now, this dude, I already have dealt with people like him. They are usually going to smell like weed from head to toe. They are usually going to have a name that's fictitious, like it'll be a dude, but it'll have a female name. And again, a lot of times you do have that and there's nothing suspicious. But the fact that this dude wasn't standing by a house, he was literally in the middle of the road when I picked him up, which is kind of weird. He, um, he just had that gangster persona look about him. 
tough attitude, and I didn't like it. And on top of all that, he's got a name that didn't match who he was. So I told him straight up, I said, hey, bro, if you're going to try something crazy, you may not even want to get in this route because I'm as crazy as you are right now. I got nothing to lose. I made him feel as uncomfortable as he made me feel. Now, I don't discard the legitimate possibility that this guy has nothing in, in mil, ill intention in mind, but obviously when you're using an account that doesn't match your name, it's already a red flag, and most of the time, dude, you just want to pass on that because if they can't follow the rules, that's just an indication that they're going to be trouble. So because it's late at night and he's using a fictitious name or an account that doesn't belong to him, I'm already suspicious. The fact that here's a yellow Lamborghini or whatever crap that is that was kind of paralleling us made me feel nervous. The whole thing had me nervous, but I made him, trust me, I made him feel as uncomfortable as he made me feel. And I let him know if he's got something planned, he's not going to catch me by surprise. And when I find myself in uncomfortable situations, one thing that I always do is let the other person know, hey, bro, I, I'm on to you. Like, whatever you're doing, I feel it already. I don't, uh, a lot of people, when they feel uncomfortable, they kind of shrink. I don't do that. When I feel uncomfortable, I'm like, hey, yo, what's good? You're making me, you give me a vibe, vibe. What's good? We're we planning. What's up? You know? So anyways, uh, it looked like it was a legitimate ride. But again, there was just so many things that could have gone wrong here. From the fact that this dude had a fake account to the fact his persona was kind of intimidating. But anyways, I dropped him off where he was going. And again, I made him feel just as nervous as he made me feel. Now, when it comes to Uber passengers that are trouble, even though I'm relatively new at this, I'm already seeing a pattern. It's usually a dude that's got dreads, usually a person that doesn't want to talk or communicate a lot, usually a person that's talking to somebody else on the phone about their whereabouts, usually a person that's using a fictitious account, and obviously they smell like weed and they're talking to somebody on the phone that looks like they're getting ready to make some type of sketchy transaction, and they're using you as a meal transportation not going to happen with me. And I'm literally at the point where I don't know how you're supposed to go about Uber. I'm going to tell you this. Me as a person, if you make me feel uncomfortable, I'm going to go straight at you and say, hey, bro, you smell like, what's good? What's happening? What are you doing? Because at the end of the day, these people feel like they can intimidate Uber drivers. And there's a lot of people that take advantage of Uber drivers. Some people who uh, like this person, whatever the crap he was doing. Then there's people who pretend like they got service animals when they really don't. Then you got people um, like the ones we're going to meet up next where they try to get you to do something that you're not supposed to do as an Uber driver. And that's exactly the situation we're heading into next. Now, already at night, late at night, I, I know like the area I'm picking the person up, the vibe they got. You see a person in the first three seconds, you can already depict if this person is going to be a problem or not just based on their stance, their attitude, the environment they're in, what they're doing. You can just gather a lot of information. And what I'm doing late at night is if I feel, I'm not judging people, okay? I don't judge anybody. I don't care if you're black, if you got dreads, if you got gold teeth, that don't matter to me. I care about your presentation, your persona, and your vibe. Like when somebody's about to do something sketchy, they're not natural. A Saturday night, every single person I dealt with tipped me. This was the only writer who did not give a tip. And I gave him the benefit of the doubt because just the fact that he wasn't a female would have been enough for me to be able to cancel that ride and not have to take him because he doesn't match the profile who he says he is. So I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt, but at the same time, I let him know, hey, bro, I'm not the one to try. But anyways, I'm heading here on US 41 and we're picking up the next person. And this one is, again, another example of people who simply don't follow the rules and they tried to threaten me. So again... We're in Bradenton, really bad neighborhood. The Salvation Army is right up ahead, so there's a lot of homelessness here. But we're picking them up from a bar, so we already know what the deal is. There's people hanging around behind this bar in all directions. So I figured they would be around the back. This is where people were hanging out. And as, I, as soon as I pull up, I already knew this had a really bad vibe. Now, what I do late at night is I'll talk to the person before they enter the vehicle. I want to just talk to them for three or four seconds and feel them out. And I realized... These people have a bad vibe. So they're already yanking on the doorknob. I put the window down. I'm like, hey, you know, um, you guys know where you're going. It's just a simple question, like, what's the name on the account? And the first thing they tell me is that, oh, we're really drunk. And, you know, we were trying to get the Uber app to do something else. So we actually need to go somewhere else. I'm like, no, it's not going to happen. They had two, three people, I think. And they wanted one person to go in the front seat. And no, you're all going in the back. So I start backing the vehicle up slowly to get away from them. Now, they are all running at me and yanking on the door, screaming at me. Um, and they're trying to tell me, hey, you know, whatever. So I drive off. I'm like, hey, listen, you can get another Uber driver. They'll be here in five minutes. It's not a big deal. I have to go. 
And as I'm leaving right here, the girl screams, oh, I'm rated whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you, you know, thrown off of Uber. Like she's saying she's highly rated dry passenger. I doubt it. You're drunk. I don't think you're highly rated anything. So I left the area as fast as I could safely because, again, they were yanking on the doors. And I told them, I said, hey, you know what? This isn't going to work. You guys are way too drunk. Now, I haven't had this happen yet where I show up and don't pick up the person. So I wanted to park somewhere safe. Uh, far enough from them to where I could, you know, report to Uber what happened. Now, Uber still thinks I'm trying to go back to them, so it's giving me directions. But at the end of the day, they broke the rules. You go from point A to point B, and that's it. You're not going to get me to go to somewhere else. You're not going to tell me there's a third person, and I have to take this person to a spot that's not on the map. That's not going to happen. Those aren't the rules. And their explanation was, well, we're too drunk to figure it out. I'm like, well, at that point, that's your problem. I deal with drunk people every single day. And none of them have a problem figuring out how to get home except for you. And at first, their demeanor wasn't that aggressive. Their demeanor was more like a finesse demeanor. They were trying to get me to bring another person with them and take them somewhere that wasn't on the map. You're not paying me for that. Like that and if you were going to do it, do it through the Uber app the way you're supposed to. And then I'll do it the way it's supposed to. But again, they're breaking the rules. And then the girl wanted to sit in the front seat. And if there's three people, you're not sitting in the front seat. This is a giant pickup truck. You're all going in the back seat. You all came together. You're all leaving together. Uh, I'm not going to have somebody in the front seat if you're making me uncomfortable. And nothing wrong with putting somebody in the front seat. In fact, the next person we pick up is going to go in the front seat with me. But that person, I'm picking them up somewhere much more decent than Bradenton. We're picking them up at the trip club in Sarasota. That's right. I've already figured out that when people go clubbing, specifically this type of club, they don't have a problem giving you large tips. At the end of the day, it's a tough place you go to throw your money away. So at this point, I'm like, I'm pretty much done with Bradenton. I want to go back to Sarasota because I do have to make money at this. So I figured, you know what? This is way too sketchy, way too dangerous. Let me just gather my composure. So I pulled up to this gas station here, but this gas station had some bad vibes. You can see there's a bicycle on the floor over here on the left. Uh, the car on the right on the road's blasting rap music really loud. I know I creeped this guy out right here because he didn't get out of his car because I didn't just park in a spot. I kind of moved around. And me making him uncomfortable made him uncomfortable. And the cars that were parked had people inside. And then right here behind this fence, there's actually people talking. Because when I pull up to spots, I roll my windows down to listen. And there's people talking in the bushes right back over there. So I didn't even feel comfortable parking right here. I wanted to park in that parking spot because I know there's cameras. But... When I realized that there's people in the bushes, I'm like, well, maybe this isn't even the place to park. Because at this point, I'm just trying to, like, regather myself, you know, pick up another route, do something different. But this whole area just had a whole bad vibe, like the whole thing. This guy right here still hadn't got out of his car. And then there's people here in the front of the store. And then there's people inside of these cars. I wanted to get out and walk a little bit and just kind of breathe. But and I realized that there's so many people in that little spot walking around and vagrant, hanging on cars. Um, people in cars make me nervous because, you know, somebody could drop somebody off, then they could flee, and then you're screwed. So uh, I almost prefer people on foot than people in cars late at night. Uh, I back in, hoping, you know, ho hoping maybe the environment will clear up, but it didn't seem like it did. When I pull up, the person in the, in the other car was looking at me, I and me, so I'm like, yep, this ain't going to work. So I finally catch a break. I get a trip out of the club, the nightclub, the uh, adult entertainment club. And it's from an adult entertainment club to a private island. So I know they're going to tip me generously because here's somebody going from a nightclub late at night to an expensive neighborhood. That's the type of ride you want. So notice this car in front of me is completely drunk. Um, there's no potholes on this road here, so there's no reason for him to be driving like this. But you'll see that this guy was completely drunk out of his mind. He's going about 35 miles an hour here, but eventually he slows down to about 25 miles an hour. And uh, he's all over the road. I wanted to pass him, but um, you'll see he's kind of swerving into the other lane. So, yeah, it's late at night in Bradenton, man. It's just, uh, you know, a lot of uh, intoxicated drivers. You also have to be careful, like, always for, uh, you know, junkies running out in the road. Like, look at him. He's, like, all over the road. Dude, look at that. That's freaking insane, bro. Just very dangerous. But if there's one thing that I have learned so far while Ubering, it is that people who go clubbing, tip generously especially in nice air so i'm like you know what enough of bradenton i'm done with bradenton let me go back into sarasota where i know there's money now notice here this person was going to turn it took him forever to make the turn he almost stopped right here and then he kind of he kind of just like sat there for a bit kind of weird but i sped up and got as far away from him as i could finally because people like that who crash into you who knows what the crap they're thinking or doing 
off and away from uh, Bradenton into Sarasota. I got a good customer. I know this is going to be a good one. We're heading to a nightclub. These are usually the best tippers. So we've had two horrible experiences already tonight. We had the sketchy dude. We had, uh, luckily, nothing happened. Then we had the people that I didn't even let them get in the car. And then you had the people that just randomly canceled. So it seems like the informalities of uh, Ubering and Bradenton at night make it very unattractive. You're dealing with a lot of informality. And I've already done Fort Myers, uh, really bad neighborhood off of uh, Tice. Yeah, like we did like neighborhoods like Dunbar, Hanson, and Tice in Fort Myers at the same time of night, like really late. And it wasn't this sketchy. By the way, if there's anybody that wants to make a request, please let me know what you want me to do with this Uber thing. Oh, crap. There's people fighting in the parking lot to the right of us. So I'm going to swing around really quickly and show you guys. I'm in the car. I, I always got my windows cracked so I can hear what's going on around me. And I can hear people screaming. So there's people back behind this little grocery store fighting. Um, actually, there used to be a food truck here. I don't know what happened to it. It was really good. But back in here, there's a little fight. And usually, I, I don't go into places like this, but... Um, there was definitely a situation unfolding here, people screaming and fighting, and this pickup truck was spinning around just like I was, so that was like a fight undergoing right there. Either a fight or a very heated argument. Either way, I was just like, I'm done with Bradenton. Like, I'm seriously not ever going to Uber here late at night ever again. It is just way too sketchy. Way too many fights, way too many violent people, um, and when people that just can't follow the rules. It's like, it's simple. You're going from point A to point B. How hard could it be to follow simple rules like getting you from point A to point B without it being a freaking sideshow? You know what I mean? So I'm going to tell you that Brainton late at night, uh, I'm sorry. If you need a ride in Brainton, freaking walk. I'm not giving you that ride. And I'm going to be honest with you. At the same exact time, this has been a learning experience. I've got so familiar with people, traffic flow, what type of things people are into, what type of things people do how people spend money, how people behave. Like, this whole Ubering thing has been completely an eye-opening experience into the area that I live in. For example, I'm starting to see the difference between Sarasota and Bradenton. Sarasota is a much safer city than Bradenton. At first glance, you know, you know Bradenton's a little bit worse, but you can't really tell how much worse. The experiences that I'm gaining on dealing with people... And just human behavior are so incredible with this Uber thing that if you're like a law enforcement officer or you're um, just anybody who has to be out on the streets and has to be street smarts, it really isn't a bad thing for you to do because, like, I'm already a versed person. I've never been to prison or anything like that, but I, I'm, you know, I'm street smart and um, I am learning so much about human behavior. And not only human behavior, but like the area that I live in, the types of activities that people do. I mean, you see people that are doing all types of crazy things. So here's the Sheetahs right here. Now, I can't show you guys my customers close up because privacy issues. So because of the nature of what we're doing, I cannot show you the customer. It goes against the policy. But you can see there's somebody passed out in front of the club. And that's about normal at 3 or 4 in the morning outside of a strip club. So we got our customer on board. And we are going to Bird Island, which is a geographical area. And again, I cannot tell you the specifics of what type of person I have, you know, I can tell you like a rough idea, but we have to respect people's privacy. Um, in the case of somebody getting picked up from a nightclub, it could be somebody that's cheating on their wife. It could be somebody who isn't supposed to be there, you know, so privacy is number one and we want to respect all of the passengers. So I cannot show you that. It's actually a violation of the Uber rules. If I did it, I would, I would lose my Uber privilege. So we don't want to do that. So we have to keep in mind that I cannot give you guys more context about who the passengers are. Those are the freaking rules. I mean, this nightclub is called Sheetahs for a reason. Sheeters, Sheetahs, you get the idea. A lot of married people go to this nightclub and get in trouble when they're not supposed to. But as much as I can tell you without violating these people's privacy is that I pick somebody up from Sheetahs and I'm taking them to a geographical area of Bird Island. Now... I have been dying to get on the Bird Island. When I saw Bird Island show up, I was like, yes, finally. One of the beautiful things about Ubering, too, is that I'm going to be able to enter private communities and see things that most people are not going to see driving through Sarasota. So when I used to be in Naples, I had a junk removal service. And with that service, I was able to get into all these gated communities. And it gave me like a real in-depth knowledge of the area that most people would never get. And with this Uber thing... 
I'm really getting into places that I haven't been able to get into yet. So, like, Bird Island is gated. You can't just go into Bird Island. You have to check in with the gate and stuff like that. And a few other places that we went into tonight were also gated. So, I'm getting to see a side of Sarasota that most people would not get to see. And that is intimate knowledge of the area. When I lived in Naples, I did that for 20 years. And I became intimately familiar with the city. And I feel like with this Uber experience, it's not so much about the money that I'm making on Uber it's more about just becoming really aware of like people, habits, human nature, the conversations that I have with people. Some of the things that I thought about like life these days, when I talk to other people, I'm surprised to hear that the way I think is the way everybody else thinks. Like I really thought that I was a unique thinker, but when I talk to other young people, they think the same way that I do about a lot of these things. So like I used to think that I was really an outcast. In some of the point of views that I had. But as I'm talking to people, I'm realizing that other people are seeing the same exact thing as me. Like, since I started this Uber thing, I've had a few customers from California. And they are telling me the same thing I've been telling you guys about California. They think it's actually the addiction problem, the homelessness, all that is actually worse over here than in California. And these are people that lived in California moved over here and they're saying yeah it's really not better over here with one exception of a person who you know they had a property in a very specific area and in that area they did have homeless people that would sleep on their front porch so who the crap wants to deal with that right so you know there are some realistic aspects of mainstream ideas that you hear on the news every day that are true right they're not I'm not discarding that these things are true um you but i'm saying is that like a lot of the things that i believe in when i talk to people they also share the same beliefs, and their beliefs that I thought were kind of not the norm. Like, for example, the notion that California is actually better than Florida in a lot of regards, you're not going to hear that on mainstream media. But if you talk to people, like I talked to somebody who recently moved from San Francisco, not somebody on this evening, okay? Just a passenger that I had, we talked about San Francisco, and they were telling me, yeah, it's actually a whole lot worse over here. It's not that bad in San Francisco. It's just media hype. So I'm really getting to have real in-depth conversations with people. And that will probably sharpen my skills as a YouTuber because I'm more aware of what people are actually thinking, what people are actually doing. So I feel like the life experiences that I'm getting from this whole Uber thing are just mind-opening. And I'll never see the world the same way again. A lot of it is bad stuff, but it's bad stuff that at least you know it exists. At least you know how people do these things, and it just gives you a better idea of how people operate. Whether it's good or bad, most of Uber is good. Like this type of ride right here, picking a guy up from a nightclub and taking him to a very exclusive area. Those are the types of experiences that you want to have. I can tell you guys the context of conversations that I've had, but with privacy, I just can't be too specific. You understand? So I'm learning and I'm sharing with you guys what I'm learning, but we have to really respect the passenger's privacy. I can't emphasize that enough. But within the realms of context, it's been a real eye-opening experience. Like It's just real good conversations. Um, you know, you'll have a conversation at 4 in the morning with a complete stranger that will be very different than the conversation you have with somebody, I don't know, outside of your apartment building. Now, this was a $23 ride with a $6 tip. I believe that's the biggest tip I've got so far through the app. So finally, we enter Bird Island. Since I moved to the Sarasota area, I was like, how am I ever going to get onto this island? I want to see this place with my own eyes. There it is, Bird Key. They do have a gay house. So it's roughly 3 in the morning, and we are driving around one of the most seclusive addresses in all of Sarasota. This is where famous people live. I think Jerry Springer had a house here. Somebody from the Rock Band ACDC might have had a house here. This is just an absolutely exclusive area, and definitely really cool to be able to get in here finally and see these homes. I know it's kind of dark and you can't tell right now, but... Yeah, these are like incredible homes. I'm talking millions of millions of dollars in here. All right, so we hopped from Bird Key to St. Armand's Island, and now we're going to go to Lido Beach and pick up somebody at a very fancy hotel on the water. And already, even though I'm kind of new at this Uber thing, I've noticed that some of the places you go to are kind of repetitive. And that's good because it's going to help me create a pattern of the type of rides you want to take and the type of rides you want to pass on. 
In the case of Bradenton at night, I'm going to say you can walk. In the case of Sarasota, downtown Sarasota, the islands, these are the types of rides you definitely want. Now, not to say that a ride on the island can't go bad, but so far, everybody that I've picked up on the island, even if they're drinking, they're much more calm, they're much happier. I haven't really had bad experiences, and I hate to kind of draw the notion that people who have more money are more decent, but as an Uber driver, you could definitely start to create some prejudices about people that you may not have previously, because for some reason or another, it really does seem that the richer areas are the types of places you want to go to where people behave decently even if they're drinking, and the bad neighborhoods are to be avoided at all costs. It's really unfortunate that you have to draw just a judgmental idea, but that's kind of the reality of this, at least from what I've done so far. All right, so passenger on board at a very fancy resort. That is the case for Ubering late at night. If you were an AC repair guy, you might have a completely different experience. Now, I've worked in all types of fields in my whole life, and uh, this whole Uber thing has really been eye-opening. And I have to admit that when you're working these high-income areas like the islands, you really are dealing with a much more well-behaved customer than you are in poor areas. You know, sometimes one of the things that leads people to poverty is lack of discipline, self-control, and the inability to follow the rules. But what leads you to living on a nice, fancy island is the complete opposite. Discipline, the ability to follow the rules. I have to admit, when dealing with these richer customers, like, you know, money areas, these night rides are very smooth. The conversations are relaxing. They're just invigorating conversations, positive up building just good conversation very genuine um it's a nice experience it really is and it's it's kind of horrible that as a uber driver i'm going to have to give this area much more preference than let's say Bradenton, because there's a lot of people that live in poor neighborhoods and they actually do have to catch a ride to work and uber drivers are going to be afraid to pick you up with good freaking reason because a lot of times, you know, today people are so anti-judging people. Oh, you're judging people. But there's judging people and they're staying alive. And if you're trying to stay alive, I can tell you that it will serve you very well to have a level of judgment. Judgment is not a bad thing. Okay, we all have to make judgment calls in our life. And judgment calls are a way of protecting yourself. It's a protection. Now, there's a difference between judging something for your safety and judging somebody out of hate and spite, it's not the same thing. A lot of times people confuse a safe, label, a safe level of judgment. You're judging somebody from a very safe and logical perspective versus you're judging somebody from a place of prejudice. It's a completely different thing. Sometimes, unfortunately, uh, you have to make decisions for your safety that may seem judgmental but again judgment is for your protection anybody who thinks judgment isn't for your protection is a complete fool i'm not bill gates i don't get to decide who gets to be a billionaire and who gets to be poor sometimes people act like when you make a judgment decision that it's based off of your personal prejudice and nothing else i'm not the bank i don't get to decide who gets a loan all i get to decide is how i get to keep living and, you know, I don't make the rules. And that's an area where sometimes people get out of line where they think that, oh, you're just being judgmental. You're judging people. I'm like, no, dude, like, uh, if you live in Anniston, Alabama, your town freaking sucks. There's better places to live. Maybe you don't know that because you haven't traveled enough. Maybe you haven't had enough life experiences. But if you ever gain enough life experiences, you'll understand that there's places that are 100 times better and safer for your family. So a lot of times people really don't understand judgment you know you have to use judgment for your safety you have to use a certain level of precaution and if you've noticed that a neighborhood is dangerous then you probably want to stay the crap up out of there if you want to keep living but the clear choice is a safer environment and it pays better this person was a 15 dollar trip and they gave me a five dollar tip so you got to follow the money baby so after that, the Uber algorithm took me to this area here where I ended up picking up somebody who did not tip. It was a $4 ride, very short ride, no tip at all. 
and the Auger River of Uber again brings me to South Sarasota, an area where you can get a lot of small short rides. Now, because I get really bad gas mileage on my truck, these small rides can actually pay off really well combined with good tips, but this guy didn't tip me. Now this one here I felt should have tipped me because it was in a very fancy community and somehow I feel that if you're making me pick you up at 3 in the morning and drive you into a very expensive neighborhood where I have to go through a gate and go through all the BS of getting into these gated communities at 3 in the morning, you have to go through a guard, they want your driver's license, if you make me go through all that, you know, that takes up more time and it should literally cost more money. But unfortunately, this person didn't tip me as well. But it was a night where there was a lot of tips. I can tell you that the vast majority of people did tip me tonight, which made it a fairly good night, making me a total of over $100 for four hours of driving. And again, we're not doing this for the money. We're doing this for the experience. The destination was a very fancy gated community on the south side of Sarasota. Again, you gotta log into these stupid gated communities. I just figured because it was a rich neighborhood that they would tip me, but the person didn't. At least they haven't so far. And this ride made me less than $7 and probably wasn't worth it because again, it was just a very long wait to get inside this community and driving in and out it just takes forever. Now, the last ride of the night, I picked up a guy, and now this is like pushing towards 4 in the morning. I pick up this guy in a residential neighborhood in South Sarasota. Now, he worked on the water in Bradenton. It was a $27 trip with a $7 tip, so that worked out very nicely for me. And the person was really cool. We had a very lengthy conversation about topics that I thought were really important to me, and they were important to this person as well. So it was really nice to meet this person. And again, at 4 in the morning, the conversations are usually pretty good. Now, Saturday night, in these types of settings, when people have been drinking, usually they're going to want to talk. You run into a few people that don't want to talk, like the person in the back seat of this ride right now, the person in the gay community, they didn't want to talk more than the necessary, and that's perfectly fine. But, you know, a lot of the people that you're meeting late at night, they've been drinking or, you know, they're just going through some type of memory or experience. I mean, you figure you live up north, you come to Sarasota, you stay up with your best friend you haven't seen in years, and you're up on the beach till 3 in the morning, and you got to catch an Uber ride. You're living an experience. You're living a moment in your life, and you may want to have something to talk about. So um, it's a little different than, like, the morning commute. The morning commute is very quiet. If I'm picking up people in the morning, very quiet. I play some mellow music and we don't talk at all. But, you know, 3 in the morning, downtown Sarasota, maybe 20% of the people you're dealing with, they're living an experience. You know, they're vacationing. They're seeing their best friends they haven't seen in years. They're living a freaking moment in their life and you get to be part of it briefly. So you got to be in the right vibe for it. And this is really a sweet gig. If you guys have any recommendations on cities I should do, we still got to do the St. Petersburg area, the Tampa area. I'm going to try to do like all these cities in the area we live along the beaches of Tampa and Clearwater and all that. So please, if you have any suggestions of areas you think I should do because they pay really well or because they're really sketchy, let me know and I'll get that for you guys.